Now you recently implanted the first one um, here at Barnes Jewish and in St. Louis, um, and it, I mean, without going into specific details with HIPAA reasons, but what what was the kind of situation that that uh, a good example of how this works? So I think the the first patient that we implanted this device in is probably a perfect illustration of how this device fits into the whole range of um, skills and, and, and equipment that we have here in the hospital. So this gentleman came in, he has had a pre previous surgery before, and so, <clears throat> which means that in, in a repeat uh, entry into his chest to do some any kind of operation would be technically much more difficult because of a scar tissue. So this gentleman came in with an acute um, heart failure and sort of an exacerbation of chronic heart failure. He ultimately um, got worse to a point where his liver was shutting down, his kidneys were shutting down. And in that, in that setting where he's unstable with worsening kidney function, worsening liver function, taking him emergently to the operating room to put a more um, a permanent type of a device in him would probably have honestly have killed him because his body just wasn't stable enough to tolerate a major operation. So here comes the uh, Impella 5 and the Impella 5 is perfect for this situation because we were able to take him to the cath lab and in conjunction with Dr. Zaharis, one of our interventional cardiologists, we were able to insert this thing through just a small incision in his leg and then advance this device up into his heart. And the device starts then providing him with five liters a minute of blood flow. Over the course of the next week, his kidneys recovered, his liver recovered, his clotting factors normalized, so he was actually awake, talking, and feeling much better. So at that point, when he was perfectly stable, his liver and kidney functions are better, when he's a better operative candidate, we then took him to the operating room and put in a more permanent device for him. And now this patient is recovering from that and is now in the process of you know, recovery and then we'll go to rehab and ultimately we'll get a heart transplant down the road. Where do you see in the future these sorts of devices going? I think the these temporary devices I think will get more, uh, more and more um, simple to put it for us to, to deploy to put in. It will allow us to get access to um, I think more uh, complicated patients and take care of them in a timely fashion. I think that's really the important part is that we not only do we need to have these devices available, we have to have them available in, in such a manner that we can put them in the patient at an appropriate time, hopefully an early enough intervention that the organs doesn't start to shut down and so mm -hmm. forth. Yeah. And in the past, before you had devices like this, there was not a lot of options for a patient, right? Right. And in fact, you know, one of the things is that this device is new and we just received it. A couple months ago, we had another patient who was in a similar situation where <clears throat> the patient's heart was um, in trouble and her organs were shutting down. And we actually had only the smaller counterpart to this, a, a similar device, an impella that was only able to provide partial heart support. And that device provided only two and a half liter support. And unfortunately, two and a half liter for someone whose heart is not working at all was inadequate. So we attempted to put that in her and it wasn't adequate. Then we had to proceed to doing a full sternotomy and putting it on a more invasive device. But that device did save her and then allow her to progress to, you know, to cardiac transplantation and recovery. And so as time goes on, we'll have better, better devices. And I think that means we'll be able to help more and more patients. Because I'll, you're absolutely right, in the, uh, probably a year, two years ago, without the uh, advent of these devices, these patients would have died. Mm -hmm. um, overall, what's the message you want to get out about these devices? I think that you know these devices are available, and I, I, I strongly suggest the patients who are having heart failure, heart acute cardiogenic shock, to talk to their local doctors and so forth, and see whether it would be appropriate for us to participate in their care and for them to be transferred here because we are at this point in one of the only, the only institution in St. Louis who has this Impella 5 available. Yeah. Dr. Wong, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.